I'm the Commissar and we're watching Forged Alliance Forever. Today I've got 5v5 action for you, it's a custom game on a generated map, a little more in the way of players than I usually cast but it's all good fun, so let's go in and meet our teams. So we've got the North team and the South team, let's meet the South team first. Over here on the left, with a lot of expanding to do to those bottom corner mixes, we have Air Player. Out of all the people who in this game I think are going to be the Air Player, this is not the one, and yet he is called Air Player. He's 1400 rated and Eon, and he's in Mucus Brown. To his right, this is Illu. He's a thousand rated, he's also Eon, and he's in purple. Going a bit further back, we have Shame Phoenix. Shame Phoenix is 1600 rated and Seraphim in electric pink, and he's opening first air, which is pretty bold. First air and first bomber before any engineers, amazing, we'll have to check on that. Also opening first air, this is Scorpion 75. He's 1200 rated, he's UEF, and he's in red. Last but not least for the southern team, here in their forward position, we have Sanoman, who is 1500 rated and Cybron in dark green. And facing off against them in the north, in the corner position with all that delicious expansion behind him, we have Elusive, a thousand rated and Cybron in lime green and there's that bomber already coming across we'll check on it in a moment moving across this is Lesnichok he's a thousand rated and Seraphim in orange to his left we have Amon Ra the game's highest rated player at 1800 we'll call him Ra and the head of the Egyptian pantheon has chosen to go UEF in white that bomber s sneaking around looking for a kill. I think it's going to get an NG and it does. Nice. Meanwhile, in the air position for the north team, but not opening the first air unlike his mirror, we have Vern Opasnost. Now, I think Vern is a clan name, so I'm going to call him Opasnost. He's 1100 rated and UEF in grass green. And last but not least, in the forward position, and already forward in this reclaim field, we have Stoned Elf. Elf is 1300 rated, and he is Cybron in baby pink. Back to that bomber. It's still only got one kill, and it's coming in trying to pick up this NG. Is it going to get it? Yes, it is. Nice. Good early raiding. However... Because he built it before he built any engineers, look at Shame's eco. It's only nine, way behind everybody else's. That is the cost of such a horrifically early bomber. Is it going to pay for itself? Well, there were some engines that it missed there that it could have picked up. But it's going to get a couple here. Two more makes four. Nice. And he's trying to inflict damage on everyone. This is a lovely clutch, but there is a mobile AA gun not too far away. And good dodge. The bomber only gets one kill and gets shot down. So five in total for that bomber. That's pretty nice. I think it paid for itself, but as we noted, it has hurt Shame's eco. Now, looking at the map, there is a lot of reclaims scattered across the middle. Sanoman has already got all of his, which is amazing, but the North team got most of theirs. Lesnachok is finishing this up, but now Sanoman has come across to help out Shane. And so Lesnachok is all on his own against two comms. And that's not a delicious situation for Lesnachok to be in. And he's going to have to fall back. He might even die. He's already in the yellow. Sanoman is Pung. He really should. I think that might have just saved Lesnachok because he's now out of range. And so it's only 1v1. And sure, Lesnachok's into the yellow. But we've got Ra coming in to help. And Lesnachok will have to fall back because Scorpion is also coming in. 
A little bit of spam from Illu comes to join the fight, but against two comms, it's not going to be enough. Sanoman and Shane fall back. Elusive has come in on the northern side, but now he's on his own on this side against three comms in the south. So he's going to have to be very careful indeed. Shame is getting the gun upgrade, so there's only two who are actually in a position to fight, and it looks like Scorpion's more interested in heading left. Even so, Elusive will probably have to fall back just a bit. Good positioning of the radar there from Shame. And we, as we saw, three comms from the north getting reclaimed versus only one from the south. If we look at the reclaim, we see that the north team is actually nearly 4,000 reclaim ahead. More than 4,000 reclaim ahead, which is amazing. However, they're going to lose something here because look at this run by from Sanoman. Getting into the back of Elusive space, might claim these four or five mixes and he's got nothing in position to defend against them. So this is going to be pretty tasty and I like it. We'll check on it in a minute, but first we have to look at this. Illu has both the speed and range upgrades on his gun and he's pushing in on Opasnost. But he's got to be careful because Ra has just finished the gun upgrade. Lesnichok is in range even though he's moving to the spot and Opasnost is moving around and with the gun upgrade and Illu already into the yellow it is definitely a case of falling back for Illu and hoping he doesn't get overrun by this team. So good defence and this T2 point defence going up from Ra's T2 engineer is really going to help them hold the area. Up here five mexes taken out by the run by we noted earlier which is beautiful. Point defence and tanks from Elusive will clear up the rest, but this raid has more than paid for itself. Great play from Sanoman. Back in the middle, we've got Gun Upgrade going down on Scorpion, and Shame already has it. We've got Gun nearly finished for Lesnichok, and we've got it already finished for Ra. However, Illu has pushed across and is hitting Elf, who's come sneaking down here while we weren't looking. Air is getting the gun upgrades in order to fight him off, but although this is good damage from Illu, he's going to have to fall back and defend because Ra has just pushed in with his comm, supported by his two allies, and with this T2 point defence to fall back to, it's going to be a challenge for Illu to hold them off and keep them off. Both Opasnost and Lesnachok are damaged, and Opasnost doesn't even have the gun. Illu has the gun, but this T2 point defense is a big thing, and there's now oh, a T1 point defense as well. However, Shame and Scorpion are both coming in to help out. So this is quite the combat that we've got going down here. They're being forced back as Scorpion approaches, but they're putting up more T2 point defense, and this firebase is going to be quite the challenge for the southern team to break. Good little bit of supporting fire from the Fervors. This is bold from Illu. I don't know if it's too bold, it's pretty bold. And nice support from Mobile Shields for Ra. The, these point defences are now just firing without mercy on the southern team comms. They're going to have to fall back. I say that, but are they? Scorpion pushed down into the yellow. They are all in the yellow. Illu only on half health. And Scorpion is now taking quite a barrage of fire. He's going to fall back if he knows what's good for him. On the left... Air had a little run by coming around here, which has distracted Elf. And that means that... Air's com can push in with his forces and destroy a nice bit of Earth's spam. Good play from Air, I like it. This is a very bold place for the injured Illu to be putting the shield on. He's on less than half health and he's rooted to the spot while he's upgrading and all of his allies and all of his spam are behind this spot. If they knew about it, which now they do thanks to this scout, the northern team comms could push and cause him some severe trouble.
Oh, we've got a lovely TMO here. Look at this. It's here from Shame, and it's hitting out these mixes from Lesnarchok. But is it going to last? Because we've got a spam push from Lesnarchok and from Elusive charging in. And there are point defences. Down goes one of them, and down goes the TMO, and down goes the Mex. But we also have a charge from Amon Ra. So on the left, here's Ra, surrounded by shields with a gun comm, and he does force Illil to cancel a shield. Well done. Over here on the left, we have Spam from Elusive and Lesnarchok. They've taken out the T2 point defences, they've taken out the tactical missile launcher, and they're threatening the land HQ for shame. But I think they're all going to be cleared up. Salaman's brought Spam and his comm, and shame has his comm. Ill falls back and Scorpion can't help because he's rooted to the spot on nano repair. Meanwhile, Lesnarchok has finished nano and is coming in to support Ra. This T2 point defence from Shame will do a little bit of work, but against the two mobile shields and Ra's com, I think it's not going to last. A couple of decent overcharges could see to that. Illu comes forward and opens up on Lesnarchok, but he'll find Lesnarchok's nano to be a nasty surprise. Air is coming in to help. He has the gun upgrade, and Scorpion has just finished nano and pushes forward. We're in for a real com scrap over here. It's going to be great. A Apasnost falling back. Nice little team over there. We'll see if it does anything later, but we really have to worry about these comms because Illu is down into the red. He's falling back, but so is Lesnarchok. However, Lesnarchok has these mobile shields from Ra to hide behind. He also has the Nano. Scorpion doesn't want to let him escape, and nor does Air Player, but now they're in range of those point defences, and they're going to have to be really careful. Bombers from Salaman help out, and Lesnarchok goes down to just 1,800 hit points, but Scorpion's pushing forward. That could be a bit too far thanks to the point defences, and he falls back a bit. Illu back down into the red. At just 2500 hit points, Air Player also fighting it out, and Lesnarchok pushes forward again. He's still in the red, but he's got 3000 hit points despite that, thanks to his nano, and hits falling down on Air Player. He's got, they're all in the red! One more hit, just one more hit, and it goes down, and boom! The chain reaction lighting up the screen in nuclear fire as a triple kill from the Combomb taking out. Illu, Scorpion and Air Player all at once and suddenly it's 5v2. That is brutal. Shame inherits um, the shameful relics of his team and how does the situation stand? He, The southern team are slightly ahead in eco but not much. And they're going to have to worry about defending. Now that Anthony comes here, we have this force from Elf pushing in. And we still have these three comms who are repairing fast thanks to their various upgrades and thanks to the shield protecting them. I love this arrangement from Ra. Three shields assisting his comm so that it's very hard for a turret such as this one to do any work on him before it goes down. And that t tactical missile launch we saw earlier is firing. It's trying to take out the land HQ for shame. That won't actually help that much because there's also one over here that he inherited from Illu. But, you know, this one's heavily assisted so it will slow his production down quite a bit. And this army isn't enough to stop the army plus the two comms that we see over here. And shame is coming across, but he's got to be careful. He's only got the gun against gun and one vet, against gun four vets and three shields. Plus there's a gun nanocom and an army. This feels like it could be an overextension for shame and I am not sure that I like it. He's falling back a little bit and we'll keep on watching him here but we also have to look at Sanoman who is pushing in on elusive and while they're both backed up with hordes of spam this is mostly T1. Salaman has gun and nano and elusive has only gun so that could be a big difference anyway in comes shame on this side and he's about to meet those two comms with their shields and I really don't like that he is creeping across the point defenses here which he's hope might be hoping to retreat to but he'll have to get past them first and he's under fire 
Ra opens up on him. These defences are only Tech 1. And Shame is just taking those hits. Over here, Lesnichok has brought in some units to help. But it's Salaman doing all the work with his comm and saving his spam until he actually needs it, which is nice. There is a T2 point defence, but... Uh, oh, but Shame, down into the red. Is he going to make it out? We have pursuit from both Lesnichok and Amon Ra. I think he might be able to make it out. And there are these point defences here, but it's going to be close. Meanwhile, Sanoman falls back. He's decided that the point defence, as well as the fact that there's Ilshis in here, is a bit too much for him. Indeed, Shame is falling back, in, but he's been caught. He's been caught by Ra. I think he's not getting out of this. He's got these PDs up here. But he's down to the red. He's shedding hit points. He can't take many more of these. Boom! And suddenly, Sanoman is all on his own, and that was painful. He has got T3 land production up. And I haven't yet seen any... Oh yeah, there is actually T3 land production here from Elf. So Sanoman all on his own. And by now, he's 80 eco behind. That's brutal. 5v1, 80 eco behind and two enemy Rambo comes in his base. He does have a brick and another one slightly further behind coming in towards Lesnichok. But one brick on its own can easily be overcharged by a comm like this. There are point defences here and here, but that's only T1 and that's some way away. And look at the eco he's losing here. This is brutal. However, more bricks coming in and Salaman bringing his common. He's got gun, he's got nano. Even so, as the last surviving com on your team against two enemy Rambo comms, this is brave. Lesnichok, though, he's now in range of this turret and he's taking a lot of fire. He's shedding his health despite his five vets and nano. He's down to the red. Are we about to see a another rejection? 2,500 hit points, but he sneaks under our shield. Raj Shields is dropping though, and Lesnichok is taking fire again. 2400, 1800 hit points. He's out! Boom! So, from 5v1 to 4v1. That's much better odds. And Shalaman obviously likes them. He's still chasing down Ra. These bricks are certainly a game changer. All the shields are dead. And of course, they are faster than the com. So, with Ra in the yellow, and Shalaman not. Is he just going to be able to chase him down? If so, that would be amazing. Big spam fight up here. There are a couple of Oshis in here, but I think there's enough to hold. So we have to come back here, where Ra is into the red. He gets under a shield, he dodges. I, are we going to see a second one? Boom! Down goes Ra, and it's now 3v1. My, these odds are evening up pretty fast, and that was the highest rated player for the Northern team. This is great work from Salaman. On the left, has Elf been caught out by a broadsword? Where's Rapasnost with the air? Elf is shedding hits. On the right though, Elusive has brought in a swarm, mostly T1, couple of T2, into the base of Sanoman. Elf taking hits hard, two gunships now. He's got a... a and what can he do about it? He's deep into the red, this is going to hurt, there's a, a, a Sam here which might help, but will it be in time? On the right. The swarm from Elusive is really hitting stuff in Salaman's base. It's taken out a mech or two. And Elf down into the red. 2400 hit points left. But that flak, that Sam. Another gunship comes in though. 1700, 1600. He is shedding hit points. It's going to be close. He's down under 1000. 700, 600, 500. And he survives, but there's still two bricks here, and these bricks are not going to be 
doing him any favours. They shoot at him and again he sheds health. He turns back. Overcharge. Boom. Down goes one brick. His own brick comes in. Look at this. This is insane. And he kills the brick getting a crucial rank of veterancy and surviving while on the right. The raid from Elusive has been cleaned up. That was insane. Amazingly well done to survive that from Earth. But amid all that, look at the eco damage that Sanoman has suffered. He is now more than 2 to 1 eco behind. That is brutal. And he's going to need something big to come back from this. He can't afford to risk his comm now. Look at the empty mexes in these old bases that have just been cleaned up. And there's a brick raid coming down here, and I don't think there's anything that can protect this flank. A few blazes, the bricks will clean them up in seconds. However, I mentioned something big, and this could well be the something big. We have a raid of five broadswords coming into Elf's flank that he inherited from Lesnichok. And there isn't really much that he has that can stop this. In they come. They're hitting Elusive's eco here. They need to be focused a bit. Those mexes would be a lovely pickup. But it looks like they're going to get some damage done. However, Apasnost has got ASFs in the area and he will be able to take them out. They take out an HQ, they hit a mex. Down here, it's as I predicted, these bricks are going to smash this expansion and there is nothing that Sanaman's going to be able to do about it. We'll have to check back on them in a bit. And there's also a sneaky little Ilshavel raid coming through the middle. Though the blazes might help with that. And though the ASFs have taken out the broadswords, not only did the broadswords get four mixes, but Sanaman has followed it up with a land army. And what good are these AA turrets going to do against a land army? I will tell you, the answer is nothing. Fantastic work. And in they come. More mechs is here they can take out. Not really much else. If they got back here, that would be nice. However, we've got to check down here. As a Titan raid comes charging in from Elf. There's point defences and there are bricks, so it will be cleaned up, but how much damage will it do? Meanwhile, look at these bricks. They've come just sweeping across here, and there's nothing to stop them. This is absolutely painful, but these bricks are still carrying on. On the left, what have Elf and Opasnos got to stop these bricks? There are ravages going up for Opasnos, but they're a huge eco-sync. On the right, the Titans are being cleared up, but look at the damage they've done, and they've forced uh, Sanoman to call back these bricks. But these bricks are still going, and they have cleaned up all the eco here that was slowly being rebuilt by Sanoman. They head north. Where are they heading? Meanwhile, they have these bricks have really hit into Elf's back end, as it were, and they're taking out T3 Mexes. This is going to hurt. I will be more worried about them taking out these unprotected mexes belonging to the North Team's air player though. And I think they're heading in just that direction, so that is pretty nice. These bricks, however, for, from Elf have just stopped. I guess he's worried about the micro. We've got T1 bomber defense against Sanoman's bricks from Opasnost. But he's going to lose his eco. He just can't work through this many bricks before they kill five T3 mexes, and that is brutal. But where are these guys going? The comm is like two steps away. He could swarm it and kill him right now if he knew, but he doesn't see it. Now, Stone Death is calling the GG in chat, and you can see why. He is, he is getting through these bricks, but look at this. I think... All of these mexes are going down, and this is insanely painful. The last brick is still in the green and shooting away, and down it goes, and look at this. A pass lost on just one mass per tick, just his comm. He has literally lost his entire eco. That's amazing from Sanoman. Meanwhile, we've got a, a raid coming up the right-hand side from Sanoman. 
Will it be able to get any work done? And meanwhile, these bricks are still... Oh, no, now they're moving. Where are they going? They're, go they're just repositioning, trying to guard this area. If only they'd known that Sandman Man was there, I think they could have run him down and killed him. But despite the massive eco damage, despite all of that, we still have more than twice the eco for North Team than we do for South Team. This, however, might go some way to remedying that. Lots of T2 Mexes here, and they are entirely, again, unprotected, despite the previous run by. And Salaman's just coming in to do it all over again. Meanwhile, those bricks have been seen and broadswords are coming to clear it up, and they're well supported by ASFs, and with the amount of damage that Salaman just inflicted on the air player, on Opasnost, I don't believe that North Team are going to have an answer to this. These bricks and loyalists, well, titans rather, might get a little bit of damage done, but no, I don't think they are. Up here, one mex is down, but there are bricks coming in. Two mex is down, good, but there are bricks coming in to save the rest, and I don't think we're going to see any more mexes. Oh, that one only got 60 hit points. Three mex is down. Well done from Sanoman before those bricks clean it all up. And... What on earth is Elf doing out here? I will tell you what he is doing. He is standing in a position where those gunships have obviously seen him. This is going to hurt. And he's just out of position. Oops, says Elf. Oops, indeed. Boom. Elf, indeed. That will teach you to be played by Will Ferrell. Something about Will Ferrell irritates me. The only time I appreciated his work was as Mugato in Zoolander. Everything else he did, rubbish. Hate it. Anyway, it does mean that Opasnost will inherit the eco from Earth that will get his air production running again because he does still have his HQ and an air support factory online and that will be nice if he can use it. And with those broadswords flying around, he'll need it. Look at them. That's ten broadswords. That is a brutal clutch. And in it comes. And a person asked my dude, are you just standing out there in the open? Do you need to really be under some shields with some sams? I think you do. Or are you too going to be caught out? Boom. My dudes. I want you to take a moment to look, look at this. Despite being two to one eco down... Despite being five against one, Sanoman has managed four kills, and it's now just him, 1v1, versus Elusive. Now true, Elusive does have double his eco, but Sanoman is the highest rated player out of those two by some way, 1500 to 1000, and he's got this huge raid, a raid of bricks, backed up by anti-air tanks, just stomping its way through the back lines of Elusive. I would say North Team, but it's all elusive now, and they're going to get some decent eco damage done. There are Ravagers here, and there is a crowd of Bricks and Loyalists coming in from Elusive to stop them. So maybe it won't be quite as devastating as it could have been, but it's still going to hurt. And they're walking into range of these Ravagers, so that will be enough for these Bricks to clean it up. They might manage another T3 mix before they die, or they might not. What are they focusing? Not sure, just the other units. I'm going to try to kill that mix rather than take out units. But down they go, and it's just these few bouncers left running around doing no good to man nor beast. Now, I don't think gunships are going to crack this last nut. That's a shield, that's a lot of flak, and a couple of sams. So that's good defense from Elusive knowing what's coming. Sanaman's going to need something else. And I think I see what something else he has planned. This monkey lord is nearly finished. That is a lovely text switch. And the Monkey Lord finishes. However, he hasn't got much land army to support it. A few bricks and a bit of T1. And this is a big land army from Elusive. Huh. However, 
I think Elusive is trying to get the same sort of raid that Salaman just got against him, and that means that these bricks will be out of position. Does he actually know about the monkey? Well, he's been told there's a spider there, and now he knows where it is, but he's still choosing to move forward with these bricks. I don't like that. I think these bricks need to be need to be right here so that he can have everything to defend the monkey and then push. If he defends the monkey and pushes, I think he can win despite the despite all the gunships because the gunships would take time to work through all of this eco and he could produce experimenters of his own, he could just swarm in with bricks I don't think Salaman could stop it but these bricks down here are they going to get anything done? Well they're trying to but the monkey is a problem and I don't know if the monkey is actually going to be stopped by what Elusive has in position here the monkey falls back trying to gather up with these bricks and T1 spam that's coming in. Meanwhile, that brick army has been caught out by gunships and it's got no anti-air in there so the gunships are just going to work through it. Great defence from Sanoman, a notable omission from Elusive who really needs those bricks over here. And the monkey comes pushing in and suddenly what's Elusive got to defend? Well. He realises that the monkey can push in here without a problem, but that gives him a different problem. It means that he's out here on his own with his comm, no flak in the area, no sams in the area, and you know what happened to the last two comms who did that, my friend? Well, this is what happened, and I think we might be about to see Elusive realising his mistake. You have eco advantage, says Stone Delf, and oops, says Elusive. The second oops, third oops, uh, of the game and boom Sanoman wins the game from a 5 to 1 position down what a comeback 1 against 5 and twice the eco against him as well what a comeback and all it took was a few gunships well a few gunships and a lot of brick raiding and generally the tenacity of a cockroach in the face of extermination excellent play from Sanoman now, what was the turning point, do you think? Where do you think that the Northern team, with their five-player advantage against one, fell apart? How did they let him get back through? Tell me in the comments below, and while you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar, and I will see you next time.